All right. Let's do our little practice. Thank you, Mary. Okay, so we do have 30 minutes of um, purification. There's no karma. There's no, this is the, the, the point about the mind is everything's impermanent. So there's nothing in the mind that we can't change. Karmic seeds, there's no imprints in the mind. There's no tendencies we can't reverse. Nothing's set in stone. And that should give us great confidence, you know. Just thinking about it psychologically. Because part of our suffering is that when we see the negativity, we identify ourselves with it. This is me. This is our biggest mistake, you know. It's not you. It isn't. It's there, but it doesn't define us. And that's a key point that Buddha makes psychologically, which we really need to understand. And we only understand that if we study the Buddha's view. One of his fundamental points is that there's nothing set in stone in the mind and our mind has this natural potential to be utterly free of the delusions. And there's lots of logic for that, but we, it's not evident to us immediately because we don't think of it like that in our culture. But it's encouraging, it's very encouraging. So we um, get our bodies straight, get our bodies in the right. There's a sort of a, there's about seven or eight points that all the great yogis over the centuries have found makes them, that makes it most conducive <coughs> situation for the mind to do its job because the body doesn't meditate the mind does so let's check our bodies so the ideal scenario is as holiness Dalai Lama says is to be sitting in full lotus position because there's something about these subtler energies being nicely aligned and crucially too because if you're going to be a meditator in the future we're going to be sitting for hours on end you're able to stay stable I mean the yogis can stay like that for days without toppling over so it's very practical Maybe most of us aren't that flexible. So if you have one leg on the other thigh, that's marvellous. If not that, ordinary cross-legged. If not that, sit in a chair, do whatever we can. That's the first thing, the, the legs and, the, and then the back. The back, I mean, obviously our spine isn't straight, but to have our body upright. This is important because it helps, you know, again, this talking at the subtler level of the energies, our mind and our subtler wind energies are intimately connected. So if the body is slumped, then the, the, the energies can't flow smoothly. So the mind gets kind of constricted. The mind gets dull. So your body upright, but not tense. Are they, I add this point. They don't say this, but I add this. because we, If we have our body upright, we, our muscles get very tense. We, hold, we squeeze our muscles. Don't. Keep your body upright and then flop your muscles. Relax your muscles. Do it consciously. So there's your legs, your bottom. If you're sitting on a chair, don't slump into the back of the chair. This is important. Hold up, hold yourself up. Don't get support. You've got to hold, have your feet firmly on the ground and hold up your back. It's important. So that's the back, the bottom, your hands, no, the, the legs, then your hands in the, in, the, in the gesture or mudra. This is a typical one we learn. Thumbs underneath, thumbs forming a left, right on top of left. Thumbs touching, forming a triangle. Then the head, slightly tilted forward, chin tucked in, jaw relaxed, tip of the tongue behind the top teeth, just near the palate. All the yogis have found that if you're meditating a long time, you don't need to dribble, don't need to swallow your spit all the time. And then your eyes looking down, lightly closed. Your eyes looking down beneath your eyelids, along your nose, as if you're looking along your nose towards the ground. That's the position. Now settle into that and then forget about it because your, your mind meditates, okay? So we're doing this kind of analysis. This is really like a visualization and analysis. We're using our mind, hopefully in a very focused way, to think through various things. This process of um, how we create karma and how we purify it. So the second step is we where we rely upon the Buddha. We have the Vajrasattva above our crown. Maybe we can think of him put in there first. 
So if you're familiar with the visualization, the Buddha in this Sambhogakaya aspect, the enjoyment body, they call it, from Tantra. And Vajrasattva is a white aspect of Vajradhara, and Vajradhara is like the main Buddha in Tantra. All the other Buddhas are manifestation of him. So Vajrasattva in this blissful light body, he's white, sitting in full lotus position on a multicolored lotus, with his hands holding a dorji and a bell at his heart. I think there's different aspects. This one, his bell is the bell is underneath the left hand and the right hand they're crossed. The bell left hand is the bell, which is wisdom, and right hand is the vajra, as they call it, which is like two wings of the bird, compassion, like that, think like that. The union of these two is Buddhahood white, very blissful, very beautiful, sweet, red, sweet face, very compassionate, very wise. Now we have a spiritual teacher, it's their mind manifesting as this Buddha for us, for our benefit. Think like that. Above our crowns, facing the same way as us. Just feel his presence, the presence of the Buddha. Now, this first, the four R's, good way to remember the four R's, good way to remember these four steps. So this first one, regret, is the first, it's, Lama Zopa says is the most important. If you don't do this one properly, you don't go further, you can't go further. And what this essentially is, is acknowledging to oneself. You've got the Buddha there, but you're talking to yourself. I find this practice to be like being your own friend. So you're talking to yourself. We usually talk to ourselves in a brutal way. We're talking to ourselves kindly here. So this first step is acknowledging the things we have done first with our body and speech that have harmed others. So maybe today, maybe today, maybe not, maybe yesterday, maybe in, certainly today, if there's something bird, burdening you, you know, like you killed the ant or you punched your boyfriend or something. You use your body and speech to harm another. Think of the actions or speech, especially. We're very good with our speech. You bad mouth somebody, got angry. So, what happens when we do these things? Because we're trying to be conscious, we get guilty. It's automatic. It's the, it's the function of ego to get guilty. You know, we over exaggerate our badness. That's what guilt is. It's anger towards ourselves. We don't want that. We want to be grown up. So, grown up thinks, I did do it. Okay, Rabina, I did do it. What a drag. I did do it out of my stupidity, out of my old habit. And I really do regret it. And regret is a very specific attitude. It's saying, my gosh, what a fool, what an idiot. I did that action. And I don't, I, it's going to leave a karmic seed in my mind because I did it. I don't want it to ripen. I do not want suffering. I don't want future suffering. So the crucial point about regret, it's kindness to yourself. It's compassion for yourself. We have to cultivate it. it. Doesn't come naturally. We we think it's guilt, or we think it's I shouldn't have done that. That's meaningless. It's absurd. You did it. Shouldn't have done it. It's just anger. It's I did do it based on my delusions, based on my bad habit, and I regret having done it because I don't want future suffering. I am sick of these habits. I'm sick of suffering. So whatever it is today, and then think. Just remember some things of this life. You've done, you know. Us women say, for example, often it's an abortion. It weighs very heavily on some people, but don't let it. It's a karmic, you know, it's a karmic connection with that person. They had the karma to be killed, and we kill them. So that action, the ants we've killed, the creatures we've killed, maybe the fish, maybe we've been in the army, we've killed people, lied, stolen from, maybe we cheated on partners. They've misused our body and speech to harm others. Just think of some of the actions, you know, yourself. So, you know, we, as I said, we are either very burdened by them, we've forgotten some, 
we try to kind of get off the hook. But here, because everything that we think and do and say just naturally leaves seeds in the mind, then, you know, join the universe, people. We've all done things, said things. And there's just a few we can remember. So, so now, secondly, think, if it makes sense to you, think I've had countless past lives. I must have done countless past actions. Everybody, join the universe, especially when I was an animal, if, you can, if that makes sense to you. Billions of karmic seeds, billions of actions that have harmed others. Think, you know, and then think, I do not want these seeds to ripen in the future as my suffering. This is the basis of regret. It's com compassion for ourselves. I'm sick of these. I do not want suffering. I'm sick of suffering. So whatever I've done with my body and speech since beginning of this time that has harmed others, I absolutely regret from the depths of my heart because I do not want the suffering to ripen. That's a fact. And then think all the stuff we like we're talking today earlier, but do we do ourselves, our bad mouthing ourselves, our self-hate, our criticism constant, you know, so brutal to ourselves. I regret this. I don't want these ridiculous tendencies. I don't want to have low self-esteem and self-loathing. I do not want this. I regret this from the depths of my heart. All my depression, my anger, all my rubbish thoughts, the jealousy, the laziness, the anxiety, all this stuff that just drags me down. I'm sick of it. So whom can I turn to? Whom can I rely upon? Whose methods can I use to help me transform this, to help me change, purify? Well, that's the Buddha. We have him above our head, the Buddha, Rajasattva. Oneness with our Lama's mind. And his only function, the only function of Buddha is to benefit. That's it. They've done the job for themselves, but their job is to help others. So how marvelous that we have methods we can use. I mean, how marvelous. That's what a, doc a doctor who's got methods that can heal me. How amazing. So delighted to have Buddha to rely upon. Think like that. So the second part of reliance, it sounds odd to us, but the way the Lamas talk, we rely upon sentient beings. And this now this part, the second part, kind of 2B in, re, in reliance, we've got to think of, we try to cultivate compassion. So here we rely upon sentient beings, because how can you have compassion if you don't have suffering sentient beings? So we need them. So think of those we've harmed. The few we can remember, the baby we aborted, the ants we killed, the boyfriend we cheated on, our mother whom we badmouth, or whoever, all the sentient beings we've harmed, just a few we can remember and think there must be countless more. There's no question. All these sentient beings, such compassion for them. I must now instead benefit them. So I'm going to purify now for their sake. The first step regret was for my sake. Now I must purify for their sake. All these suffering sentient beings. And now if we can, we have compassion for those who've harmed us. As Gessie Sopa said, you know, the Bodhisattvas, they need their enemies. They're the best object to have compassion for. They're the most powerful. So if we can have compassion for those who've harmed us, and why should we? This is the basis of real compassion. Like in, this, in the first step, we have compassion for ourselves because we're sick of suffering. We don't want future suffering. So here we have compassion for others who've harmed us because they will suffer in the future because of those actions. That's the real basis of real compassion because sentient beings harm themselves. To people who've harmed us, we can. Such compassion for them because they will suffer in the future. 
So I've been, I purify for their sake as well. So now, the third step, the remedy. There's different ways of doing this visualization, and this is one way. So we, you know, we can do many kinds. So this way, we're going to do a bit of purifying of the body and the speech and the mind. So we now visualize Lama Bodhisattva so happily sending this powerful nectar from his heart that arcs around and enters our crown and forcefully fills us like a sort of a hose, a very powerful hose, you know, this white liquid. Forcefully fills us with all this liquid. Just imagine, you're just using your creative imagination, that's all. And as Lama Zopa says, and this is so peculiar to us, because we're so convinced we're just innately bad. He says, the more powerfully you want this, the more powerfully you visualize and imagine it and think it, that is what purifies. It's your mind, as Lama Yeshi says, it's your mind that creates negativity. So it's with your mind that you create positivity. It's very simple. So strongly want, imagine purifying every karmic seed of every action you've ever done since beginning this time with your body. And imagine they're all washed out forcefully with this liquid forcing out through our lower orifices like filthy liquid and it disappears into space not one atom left as we say the mantra i didn't say to put the mantra up mary but if people know it or if you have it for people put it up on the screen if you would like to follow it or just you listen as you wish but it's lovely to it's good to learn it just visualizing strongly this wishing this wanting this as we say the mantra Om Vajrasattva Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasattva Teno Patita Dido Mebawa Suto Shayo Mebawa Supo Shayo Mebawa Anurato Mebawa Sarva Sidi Memprayata Sawa Karma Sutsa Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hung Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sarva Tatagata Vajra Mami Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ah Hung Pe that peh is like very, you spit it out, it's very wrathful. Peh. Om Vajrasattva Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasattva Teno Patita Dido Mebawa Suto Shayo Mebawa Supo Shayo Mebawa Anurato Mebawa Sarva Siddhi Memprayasa Sawa Karma Sutsa Me Sitam Triam Kuru Hung Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sarva Tata Gata Vadra Mami Mutsa Vadra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ha Hung Pe Om Vajrasattva Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasattva Teno Patita Dido Mebawa Suto Shayo Mebawa Supo Shayo Mebawa Anorato Mebawa Sarva Siddhi Memprayata Sawa Karma Sutsa Me Sitam Triam Kuru Hung Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sarva Tata Gata Vadra Mami Mutsa Vadra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ha Hung Pe Imagine totally full of this blissful nectar that's washed away all the imprints. Just imagine this, wish this, want this. Because these karmic seeds, the more powerful our mind, the counteraction is what purifies. You've got to remember that. They're not, they're not self existent. The counteraction, the countering of them is the mind. So, concept, such a powerful idea. Be so delighted, full of this blissful nectar. So now Lama Vajrasattva so compassionately again sends, sends his blissful nectar from his heart, arcs around, enters our heart. And this time it fills us, it forces up to the top all the imprints of all the harm we've ever done with our ridiculous speech. The lying, the bad-mouthing, the harsh speech, the rabbiting on about nothing speech, the bad-mouthing behind backs, all this nonsense that comes out of our mouths, you know. All the imprints of this since beginning this time totally purified, eradicated, and all the, the nectar forces up to the surface of our body, <clears throat> all the imprints of this negativity of speech, which then leads through the top parts of our body, like just like Lama Yeshi says, you know, when you turn on a tap in the sink, all the junk in the glass comes to the surface, doesn't it? All forces out through the top. It's 
blissful nectar. All this nonsense about speech purifying. Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sattva Teno Patita Dido Me Bawa Suto Shayo Me Bawa Supo Shayo Me Bawa Anorakta Me Bawa Sarva Siddhi Memprayata Sawa Karma Sutsa Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hong Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ha Hung Pe Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sattva Teno Patita Dido Me Bawa Suto Shayo Me Bawa Subo Shayo Me Bawa Anorato Me Bawa Sarva Siddhi Memprayata Sawa Karma Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hong Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ha Hung Pe Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sattva Teno Patita Dido Me Bawa Suto Shayo Me Bawa Supo Shayo Me Bawa Anorato Me Bawa Sarva Siddhi Memprayata Sawa Karma Sutsa Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hong Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ha Hung Pe Totally washed out full of this blissful nectar. How amazing. All the rubbish of our speech gone. And now Lama Vajrasapa so kindly this time sends beams of light that arc around. And I always say, I don't know if light can arc, but never mind, we're pretending. And fills us, enters our heart and fills us instantly. And this time instantly, just like when you turn on a light in a room, the darkness is dispelled, isn't it, instantly. So all the delusions, the ego grasping that believes in the self-existent me, which gives rise to this bottomless spirit of attachment to get what that fantasy me wants, which gives rise to aversion and anger and panic and anxiety and, and depression when it doesn't get what it wants, and all the other ridiculous delusions, the jealousy, the depression, the anxiety, the resentment, the arrogance, the low self-esteem, you name it. All of this nonsense. Instantly dispelled by this radiant light filling us. Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sattva Teno Patita Dido Me Bawa Suto Shayo Me Bawa Supo Shayo Me Bawa Anorato Me Bawa Sarva Siddhi Men Prayata Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hong Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mami Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ha Hong Pe Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sattva Teno Patita Dido Me Bawa Suto Shayo Me Bawa Supo Shayo Me Bawa Anorato Me Bawa Sarva Siddhi Men Prayata Sawa Karma Sutsa Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hong Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ha Hung Pe Full of this blissful light. So happy. All the delusions gone. So now one more time, this is sort of, they talk about how this process, now we've just achieved liberation. We imagine this, we've achieved our nirvana. We've removed all the delusions. Now we're going to remove even the subtlest imprints of these delusions, which is what happens when we add bodhicitta to the mix. And now these are called the obstacles on our omniscience. So this time it sounds very busy to do it, but this is what the lamas say. You do all three together. It really does seem busy, doesn't it? But we try our best. Nectar coming and pushing down, nectar going up and light. Just try and imagine all three, removing even this subtlest imprints of all this nonsense, and imagine we actually become the Buddha. Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sattva Teno Patita Dido Me Bawa Sudo Shayo Me Bawa Subo Shayo Me Bawa Anorato Me Bawa Sarva Siddhi Men Prayata Sawa Karma Sutsa Me Siddham Shriam Kuru Hung Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ha Hung Pe Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sattva Teno Patita Dido Me Bawa Suto Shayo Me Bawa Supo Shayo Me Bawa Anorato Me Bawa Sarva Siddhi Me Prayata Sawa Karma Sutsa Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hong Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahung Pe 
ဟောဘာဂျစတ်ဗာဂျစမာယာမနုဘာလာယာဗာဂျစတ်ဗာဂျင်ဟောဘာဒီဒီရိုမေဘာဝါစုတောရှာယောမေဘာဝါစုကော
And then we finish. Delighted in this 30 minutes. Feel confident, you know. And go to, as Lamia, she says, now we can go to bed with a happy mind. Jang Tum Sam Chogun Poche, Make Panam Kigu Chig, Kepan Yampa, Mepa Yang, Gong Ne Gong Du, Pawa Shog. And if there are any questions, just maybe keep them and we can talk about them next week or something. We'll see what happens. Okay, darling people, that's it. Good night, goodbye, and thank you very much, and see you somewhere again. Isn't it? Good night, Rambina.